Shinji Nakano has worked his way up to Formula One from karting all the way through Formula 3000 and Formula Nippon. So he's obviously got talent. Will 1998 see him turn that talent into championship points? He'll certainly be hoping to. As the new number one driver with Jordan, Damon Hill will be looking to make a serious challenge to the big four. This may well be the season for Hill and Jordan to take race wins. After collecting 20 points in a Jordan last season, Giancarlo Fisichella will be looking forward to driving for Benetton. It could be the time for a serious challenge from the Italian. Well, it's that time again when I have the privilege of welcoming you to the British Grand Prix. We're back at historic Silverstone, the proud host to this season's eighth round. For a driver to come second and almost win a Grand Prix in a team's first season shows great talent. Rubens Barrichello's got it, and he'll be hoping for more of the same in 1998. Wurtz will be hoping to take full advantage of his first full season in Formula One. Early indications are that he's a very good prospect and that he'll be looking to have a good first season for Benetton. Heinz Harold Frensen will want to take the experience of 1997 and turn it into victories this year. So he'll be hoping to improve on the 41 points he collected last season. Today you join us for the start of the 1998 Formula One World Championship. Once again, we're in Albert Park, Melbourne, for round one, the Australian Grand Prix. Some people would say that success has been long overdue for Eddie Irvine, and I'm sure he'd agree. He'll be hoping that 1998 is the season that starts bringing that success his way. Perhaps too much was expected last season from young Ralph Schumacher, this season, we'll hopefully see a more mature and better prepared driver than Ralph was in 1997. That black flag says, go back to the pits. It's a stop-go penalty, and he must return to the pits within one lap, or he'll more than likely be disqualified. Mika Hakkinen celebrated a first career victory in Formula One in the last round of 1997. With the McLaren performing well, Hakkinen looked capable of more than one win, so perhaps 1998 will see him add to his sole victory. This season will be Mika Salo's chance to push for points on a regular basis, given the right car. He's a really talented driver, and this is his big chance. He just couldn't make it into the top two, but take nothing away from a tremendous third place and don't forget, that also means four valuable championship points. Pedro Deniz really deserves his place in the Arrows team this year, which could see him mature enough to get into the top six places and improve on his two points from last season. For Johnny Herbert in his Sauber, 11th in last year's championship was a reasonable achievement, but he'll be out to improve on that this year, and I wouldn't bet against him doing it. Michael Schumacher is one of the most talented drivers in motor racing history. He'll be pushing his Ferrari to the limits once again in an effort to win the World Championship a third time. It looks like a problem with Eddie Irvine's Ferrari. I can't see anything wrong with the car itself, though. I can only guess that it's engine failure or maybe transmission. Unfortunately, he'll have to put his retirement behind him and concentrate on bouncing back. In any case, his Austrian Grand Prix is over. And that white flag waving at him is to let him know that he may find himself obstructed by a much slower car. Basically, it says, take care. Mika Hakkinen's obviously been in a collision. He's just limping along there. It could be race over for Mika or at least a long pit stop. Well, we're here again for possibly the most famous Grand Prix in the Formula One calendar. Welcome to the streets of Monte Carlo for the Monaco Grand Prix. Esteban Tuero is the youngest driver in the 1998 lineup at just 19 years of age. His aim this year will undoubtedly be to make a name for himself in Formula One and possibly earn some points. And that flag means that he's being given a warning for unsportsmanlike behaviour. He'll have to take care from here on 
Next time he'll be disqualified. Rubens Barrichello's definitely off the pace. It must be something internal with his car. There's nothing to suggest any damage to the chassis. 1997 saw two victories for David Coulthard, but the McLaren team and Coulthard himself will be hoping for more this season. A serious challenge then for the championship will be Coulthard's aim for 1998. The unfortunate Olivier Panis broke two legs in last year's Canadian Grand Prix. He's fully recovered for the 1998 season, though, and he's going to be aiming to take his Prost car into the points regularly and maybe even take a win. Ricardo Rosset will be earnestly hoping that he can help Tyrrell towards success. His pre-season testing saw his times gradually fall and hopefully he can improve more and challenge for points in 1998. Takagi enters the 1998 season as a virtual unknown. He's had a fair amount of success as a Formula 3000 driver and he'll be hoping to make an impression with Tyrrell this season after being very impressive in testing. Jean Alesi will need all his experience to drive his Sauber into the points consistently. The team's ambitious and Jean is too. So could 1998 be their year? Well, we'll see. This young Italian could well be someone to watch this season after an explosive start to his Formula One career last year. Trilli was an impressive replacement for the injured Panis and shows great promise. As usual, once the cars are in their grid positions, the lights will go on. One, two, three, four, five. A short pause and then it's go. He doesn't quite get the win he'd have wanted, but I'm sure he'd have taken six championship points at the beginning of the race. And you can't argue with a podium place. It's a fantastic third place. Not only does that give him a podium place, but it also gives him four championship points. The whole team have worked so hard for that result, they'll be delighted to be on the podium and to have six championship points in the bag. With a finish in 20th place, there's plenty of room for improvement. But with good reliability, that improvement may not be too far away. Hello from the A1 ring. We're here for round nine of the 1998 season, the Austrian Grand Prix. It's Coulthard, he's lost a wing. Not only will that mean a pit stop to replace it, but he'll struggle to get back to the pits. Surely Rubens Barrichello's going to have to bring his steward in at the end of this lap. He can't possibly carry on with that amount of damage. The rain may not be falling at the moment, but he's taking a big gamble on tyres by sticking with slicks. Hopefully that gamble will prove a winner. Hello and welcome to the Argentinian Grand Prix here in Buenos Aires. Round three of the 1998 season. It's round two in this year's championship. And you join us today at the Interlagos circuit for the Brazilian Grand Prix. If he's on a harder compound tyre, it may not give him the same grip as the softer ones, but durability won't be such a problem now. The world champion will be out to defend his title in 1998. It was a close thing last year, and he'll be out to stamp his authority on this season. He crosses the line 21st. Any finish in Formula One is a good finish, but he'll hope to improve next time. Choice of tyres will decide it, Murray. Do they gamble the start on slicks and hope that it clears up? Or stay with wets hoping that the track doesn't dry? This is the Nürburgring. Welcome to round 14 of this season's World Championship, the Luxembourg Grand Prix. It's victory for Takagi. That was a fantastic race for the Japanese driver in his debut season. As soon as you turn through Yonkao, it's hard acceleration uphill all the way past Subido de Box driving hard to the finish line. It's Britain's very own Johnny Herbert coming home to take the chequered flag. Go, Johnny, go! What a win! Oh, what bad, bad luck. A retirement from Monaco, and he'll be gutted with that. Damon Hill's got to have a problem. He's dropped off the pace, but I can't see any chassis damage. It must be mechanical. That was a very hard-earned World Championship point, and I'm sure both he and his team are going to be very pleased to collect it. 
Lots of grip, be careful of the curbs through there as you launch into the final corner. A first gear right-hander, extremely slow. And Pedro Diniz in the Arrows has quite a bit of damage to his car. If he's able to get back, it's a definite pit stop for the Brazilian. I'd imagine that Pedro Diniz will be coming into the pits at the end of this lap. His Arrows has obviously got some mechanical problem. What a magnificent result! Second position, a place on the podium, and six world championship points. And he's got a puncture. His rear tyre's blown. That's going to cost him time. But if he can stay in control, he may just make it back to the pits. A place on the podium. What more can you ask? What a great result to pick up third place and four valuable championship points. That's a finish in 22nd position. But at least it was a finish. And with good reliability in a car, there's a lot of hope for the future. He'll have to take care, as the white flag you can see means there's a stationary vehicle on the road ahead, and that could be very dangerous. What an incredible win for Rossette! It's victory for Tyrrell! What a result for Ricardo Rossette! The white flag's being waved at him, so he'll have to watch himself. There's someone ahead who's going much slower than him, and it may cause an obstruction. Young Esteban Tuero will have to just struggle back to the pits. Look at the damage he's picked up. Even getting back's going to be difficult. Today, we welcome you to the San Marino Grand Prix from the Autodromo Enzo e Dino Ferrari in Imola. He's managed to finish in the points, and that's a tremendous achievement. A sixth-place finish and a world championship point. Heinz Harold Frensen takes the chequered flag and wins a fantastic Grand Prix. Tremendous! Along the short farm straight, under the bridge, into the infamous banked bridge corner before breaking hard into Priory. Now, there's no rain at the moment, but the track is slightly damp, so it'd probably be best to go with rain tyres. Takag is slowed dramatically, and that could be bad news for Tyrrell. It may well be a mechanical fault. And over the finish line for a lap of 2.64 miles. And during the race, you'll have to do it all again 71 times. Predson's damaged his car. If he can carry on, which I doubt, it'll be definitely just to the pits. Well, hardly ideal conditions for racing, but it's the same for everyone. It's just a question of who'll handle things best. The Hunger Roar Ring is a tight circuit, and you really must be patient. But he'll have to be patient and wait until next year to try this circuit again. Esteban Tuero will be absolutely ecstatic as he crosses the line to take the chequered flag. Thank you for joining us for the Japanese Grand Prix. Suzuka this year plays host to the final race of the season. If you survive that, it's full power up through Beau Rivage towards Massane, a medium left-hander leading into Casino Square. He's being shown the black flag. He's out of the race. The marshals have spotted the infringement and he's been disqualified. That's a retirement and it puts him out of this year's Argentinian Grand Prix. Unbelievable. And Damon Hill crosses the line to win. What a great result for Damon. And for Jordan, he's finished 13th. Well, not quite the top 10, but a very good result, which hopefully they can build on. Can you believe his luck? The San Marino Grand Prix shows no mercy and he's out of this year's race. He'll be disappointed to have missed a podium place, but he'll be delighted to be picking up three points. That's a great result. Rossette's car looms large in front of him. It's surely only a matter of time before he tries to get past. You must adhere to the yellow flag conditions when the pace car is on the track because you will more than likely be black flagged if you don't. It's Brazilian Pedro Diniz. The arrows of Diniz is coming up to the line to win the Grand Prix. Fifth place is two World Championship points, and although he'd have preferred more, I'm sure he'll be satisfied with his day's work. Then a short straight eases you into the maggots Beckett's complex, a series of fast turns, right, left, right. This is the famous spa Francochon circuit. And we're here for today's Belgian Grand Prix. Germany is the host, Hockenheim is the circuit. So sit back and enjoy the German Grand Prix. And Eddie Irvine comes over the finish line to take first place for Ferrari. 
What a sensational win! There's the yellow flag being waved. There must have been a crash ahead. The drivers must slow down. Alexander Wurtz is suddenly off the pace. And there are no obvious reasons why. Hopefully it's nothing race-threatening. Olivier Panis has taken on quite a bit of damage to his Prost. I doubt that he'll be able to go much further without a pit stop. The braking forces are incredible at Hockenheim, with drivers going from 200 miles an hour to as low as 60 in just a few metres. Leading immediately into turn two, Estoril, a never-ending right-hander taken initially in fourth and then through to top gear. The start of the lap is often frantic, braking hard for the narrowing Sandevot corner, scene of many a spectacular crash. I think he's on the softer compound tyres, which will give him much better grip, but they'll wear a lot quicker. Tora Takagi is going to be coming into the pits at the end of this lap, if he can make it with all that damage on his car. First you accelerate down to turn one, scene of many a first lap incident, and it's aggressively around the Castrol S. Young Ralph Schumacher's won the race. Victory for Ralph Schumacher. Like brother Michael, he's a winner. There's a problem for Alexander Wurz. His car's damaged and he'll at least have to come into the pits. There's a smashed up Benetton. It's Fissy Kellers. Looks as though it'll be a struggle for him just to keep going. A short burst to the swimming pool complex. A fast left then right, followed by another slower right left. Next is the Piratella, a double apex left-hander. The first is medium speed. The second is faster still. Either that or his suspension is damaged. It could even be stuck in gear, but without a doubt it's a mechanical fault of some kind. Then you arrive at Spoon Curve, a sharp double left-hander that generates enormous loads upon the driver as you build up G-force. Next is all about speed. The faster section of the circuit takes you along a high-speed straight, gently uphill all the way. That is a magnificent fourth place. And he collects three World Championship points as well. Not good driving. He can have no excuses for spinning off. He just needs to calm down a bit. Let the car do the work. The Spanish Grand Prix is go. A fabulous sight. 22 cars fly down to turn one. And he goes slam bang into the barriers. He'll really have to be careful from now on. It doesn't look good for Jan Magnussen at the moment. It may well be engine trouble, but he's definitely struggling. Look at that! Look at that! He's got thick black smoke pouring out of his engine. What an awful end to his race. Rubens Barrichello goes through to take first place and a win in today's Grand Prix. The red flag's being shown to let the drivers know that the race has been stopped. Drama around the circuit. The blue flag being held out is to say he's going to have to move out of the way for the car coming up behind him. Round 11, and we're at the Hungaro Ring, home of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Welcome to the Italian Grand Prix here in Monza, which plays host to round 13 of the World Championship. After accelerating out and past the pit lane entrance, you break very hard for the final tight right-hander, Hokia. The unfortunate Esteban Tuero seems to be fighting his car. He's obviously got a handling problem. Ralph Schumacher could be out of luck here. It could be his engine giving him trouble, but his lap times aren't badly off. Another fast right, then it's high speed all the way through Blanchimont down towards the very tricky bus stop chicane. And Coulthard notches up another Grand Prix win here today. What a brilliant drive. I don't think he'll better his current best lap time. Split two sees him further down than his previous best. Welcome to Montreal for round seven in the 1998 season, the Canadian Grand Prix. Italy's Giancarlo Fisichella comes over the line to win this Grand Prix. As the Canadian crosses the line in first place, it's a win for the world champion Ann Williams. He'll be delighted to have picked up three world championship points. A very well-earned fourth place. There's hardly a cloud in the sky and the sun is shining. It should be a great race today. And it's Olivier Panis in the Prost who takes the chequered flag. What a great win for the Frenchman. You then negotiate the two left-hand bumpy off-camber sweeping curves that brings you round towards the end of the lap. Welcome to the bonus round, the Scottish Grand Prix held on the Dundee street circuit.
It definitely looks like Rossette will have to stop. He's losing a lot of ground. He's got a problem. The Canadian's done a lot of damage to his car. If he manages to continue, he'll have to come into the pits. David Coulthard has won. He takes the chequered flag and completes a magnificent victory. 12th place, and they can be pleased with that. The car went well, and they can build on that performance. Now breaking into the first of three chicanes. This one's the Clark curve, bumpy and tight at the entry. A magnificent start at Spielberg. The Austrian Grand Prix is go, go, go. 19th place could be better, but it could definitely be worse, as these days any finish is a good one. A long sweep downhill, gaining a lot of speed towards the Dunlop curve. It's a little bumpy in the braking area. He finishes the race in the top 10. Only just, mind you. But that's a good result he can be proud of. Once through safely, it's a case of opening up and taking the speed right to the limit along the back straight towards the parabolica. You need to get ready to brake for the Ost curve, which is very slow. A tight chicane and it's a potential accident spot. Oh, that arrows of Mikasalo's badly damaged. He'll have to come into the pits at the end of this lap. The exit takes you into a large sweeping right, building up to 200 miles an hour plus towards the second chicane. And there's a lot of damage to Eddie Irvine's Ferrari. I don't know if he'll be able to carry on or not. What a breathtaking win for Giancarlo Fisichella. That's a tremendous victory for the young Italian. Riccardo Rossit completes a magnificent drive to take the chequered flag. Unbelievable. It's Michael Schumacher. His car's damaged. He's got a real race on his hands just to continue. As Shinji Nakano comes up to the finishing line and wins. Incredible. Unfortunately, he's lost some more time at the second split and he may well have lost his chance. You really have to be on your toes for the whole race or you risk doing just that. That'll hurt race position too. That Jordan of Damon Hill's in a bad state and he's going to have to come into the pits if he's thinking of carrying on. The car that's just gone into the pits is Deniz's Arrows. Pedro Deniz is making a pit stop. And that caps a tremendous day for Mikasalo as he crosses the line to finish first. Well, he's bound to be delighted to have finished in the points. They're valuable points as well, two to be exact. That's spot on, Murray. Whether it's a bad judgment or a system fault of some kind, that's the end of his race, I'm afraid. Yes, it's often said that wet weather is a good leveller in Formula One. It will certainly sort the good from the great. Before you can catch your breath again, it's heavy braking towards a slow left-hander near the pit lane entrance. 11th place shows that they're on the brink of better things. They can be pleased with that finish. Rivazza 2 swings you back towards the final straight. Just the Tragado chicane to go. The lap starts with a sweep left as you motor on towards the Tamburello chicane, a medium left right. Jano Trudy must be having some kind of problem with the Prost. His lap time's well up. Surely there's something wrong with the car. That lap time was way below his average for this session. Esteban Tuero is the next obstacle in front of him. Is he about to try and get past him? He's obviously going to have to come into the pits after that crash. Let's just hope the car isn't too badly damaged. And once he crosses the line, he'll have only one more complete lap of the circuit to go. Italy's Jano Trulli can't possibly go on in that car without coming into the pits. He's been called into the pits because of a mechanical problem. He'll have to come back to the pits. 18th place may not seem so hot, but this is Formula One. Finishing is good. It looks like he's struggling a bit with oversteer. He could have to come into the pits if it's a car problem. Mika Salo must have a problem with his car. His performance has dropped dramatically. He'll have to make a pit stop. And with the rain falling steadily round the circuit, it could be a very interesting race indeed. His European Grand Prix here at the Nürburgring has absolutely collapsed. Looks like he's got a problem. He certainly seems to be struggling, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him come into the pits. With a bit of luck, today's wet start will clear up, and we'll get a dry track for the majority of the race. Right now, the track seems to be too wet for slicks, and that'll make tyre choice crucial for the race. The track here at Jerez has proved to be too much for him 
And that ends his race, I'm afraid. That was a great start. Now all he's got to do is keep his concentration and stay out of trouble. That's it. It's over. He's out at Luxembourg. The Nürburgring's proved too much for him. That's a Lacey in front of him. Now he needs just to get close enough to try and pass. Once more, it's hard acceleration out of club corner and into a short straight. The car is working overtime. Then it's pedal to the metal as you negotiate the final full speed left into Tribune, the home straight. Well, it didn't look too bad, but you never know. He'll definitely be coming in at the end of this lap, though. You pass under the bridge just before the next chicane, taking it easy on entry, but really opening up on the exit. Then another shorter straight to take you down towards the first slow bend the Seat, a tight left-hander. The Canadian's going really slowly at the moment. It has to be a problem. This could be the end of his race. It's a brave choice he's made to keep slicks when the track's still damp. Let's hope it pays off for him. Another unsighted fast left-hander leads you into a long sweeping 180 degree right-hander. It's great to watch though, Murray, and it takes a lot of energy and concentration to keep a car behind you for this long. We have liftoff. The German Grand Prix goes schnell, schnell, schnell at Hockenheim. So far, the weather's held up well, but those rain clouds up there could change everything. The waving flag means that up ahead there's oil or water on the track. It's obvious that Johnny Herbert's picked up a lot of damage. He'll have to come into the pits. Finally, you approach the slowest part of the circuit, Casino Chicane, a first gear, right, left. You're right, it could be engine related or just possibly gearbox problems. I can't see him finishing this race now. This chicane is a left, right, but again, the braking has to be accurate and power on is critical. At the Imola Chicane, come down two gears, sweeping downhill, right, then left, lots of G-force here. He'll have to drive carefully. That flag indicates oil or water on the track up ahead. As he crosses the line, I can tell you, yes, I can tell you that he's in provisional pole position. That 16th place shows the car's reliable and it means they can build on the result. There's obviously too much damage for Reset to stay out. He's going to have to come into the pits. There's a problem with Schumacher's car. He's losing a lot of time. He's got a problem. Now you enter the slow section of the circuit and a sharp right leads you towards the Pinarino left turn. That's a tremendous victory for Hakkinen. It's a win for McLaren's Mika Hakkinen. It looks like there's something wrong with the car. Do you think he'll be coming into the pits at the end of the lap, Martin? I think he should manage, actually, Murray, if he takes it easy. It's just a question of how much ground he loses. That split time wasn't what he was looking for. He's fallen further behind the current leader. Michael Schumacher wins for Ferrari, a great result for the double world champion. That moves you into the long Renault curve. You get a lot of grip around this turn over the blind crest. Another short straight with a fast downhill right-hander that can catch you out if you're not concentrating. Suzuka is always a favourite with the drivers, but I'm sure that won't be the case at the moment. What terrible luck. I think we can expect Olivier Panis into the pit soon. He's dropped right off the pace. We're in Barcelona today for the Spanish Grand Prix, the fifth race in the Grand Prix calendar. Oh my word, that's his race finished. Yes, he's retiring from the German Grand Prix. David Coulthard looks to be in trouble. In fact, it could be big trouble if it's a car problem. The front wing's got some damage. Yes, the right-hand side's come off. He'll have to pit at the end of this lap. It may have been the car, but I'm with you, Martin, on this one. It did look like poor driving. Then it's immediately onto the brakes for a 180-degree right-hander that takes you into a short straight. After accelerating away from the apex, it's just a dab on the brakes as you sweep through the next fast chicane. It's the chicken flag for Barrichello. What a fantastic race it's been for the whole Stewart team. David Coulthard sends out the message quite clearly that there's no easy way past him. Sadly, that lap doesn't make any impression. He stays last on the grid provisionally. Full throttle through the curves until you arrive at the slowest part of the track. Rivazza, a tight left. That is a shame. The whole team felt confident they could perform well on the Interlagos circuit. The rain stayed away so far but I don't think it'll be too long before the track's wet. He finishes 17th, 
and hopefully that'll be the start of better things to come. With skill, this is a full-speed right-hander that takes you towards the tight Entrada de Mixtos. Into the terrifying high-speed left-right gentle left Eau Rouge and Radion. That is unbelievable, Martin. He's slowing down. He's definitely slowing right down. That's a tremendous win for Panis. What a great drive he's had today. Heights Harold Frenson's making a pit stop. He's just past our commentary box now. Yes, Argentina will go down as a disappointment without doubt. I guess there's always next season. And it's a fantastic drive by the world champion as he takes the chequered flag. Oh, my heart goes out to him. What a way to finish the Italian Grand Prix. You accelerate downhill before breaking into Rivage, a 180-degree right-hander. His 1998 Hungarian Grand Prix ends. He's retiring. If he's about to come into the pits, I don't think it was part of the team's strategy. He's been shown the warning flag. If he does anything else dodgy, he'll be black flagged. It looks like there could be a problem with the engine temperature. Just ease off a little to be safe. It's hard to say, Murray. It could be the car has some kind of problem, or he may have touched someone. An exhilarating lap comes to an end. It's 45 laps for the full Grand Prix. Not quite good enough to get any points, but that's a well-earned eighth place. Then 130R, a very high-speed left-hander, one of the world's greatest corners. It's so true that it's easier to chase than be chased but he's handling the pressure very well. Now build up speed again, just taking top gear before the Nürburgring chicane right left. It could be that his tyres are going off a bit. We may see him enter the pit lane for a tyre change. It's a 180 degree right hander. Make sure you take a good line here. It's very slippery. It looks to me as though Elise's Sauber's struggling. I'm sure it's a car problem. That prepares you for the Ferra Derva curve, which is a long medium right hand bend over the crest. It could be a mechanical problem. I don't think it's his tyres and there's no apparent external damage. It's a retirement. Yes, he's out of the 1998 Grand Prix here at Silverstone. Away from the line, it's maximum acceleration all the way down this long and wide opening straight. Another left-right chicane takes you to the last corners. A pair of right-handers. The Belgian circuit is one of my favourites, but I don't think he'll share my sentiments after this retirement. The very tight left-right that feeds you back onto the start-finish straight to complete the lap. Don't know what Johnny Herbert's problem is, but he's certainly got one. Engine, perhaps? And Shinji Nakano's his next target. He's about to try and get past him, though. Another 90-degree right takes you up towards the Prost stand and to the slowest turn on the circuit. A driver with a laces experience can make his car very wide. That's a magnificent win for Pedro Deniz's arrows. You then break hard for the off-camber left-hander that leads on to the Subido de Lago straight. The excitement begins to mount as we move towards the last few laps of the race. The second last bend is the medium A1 curve, which takes you past the pit lane entrance. The Montreal circuit's beaten him. He's out of the Canadian Grand Prix. He'll be disappointed that he didn't move up the grid. He stays in 21st place. It's what a tremendous start to the Monaco Grand Prix. Incredible. The tightest of circuits and maximum concentration is essential throughout each and every lap. You arrive at the right-hand Ajib curve first, a very fast corner on entry. He may be suffering from understeer, either through some damage to the car, or it could be the car setup. Mika Hakkinen is dropping off the pace a bit. It could be a mechanical problem. He's definitely slowing. Then you fly down the short straight towards the very tight downhill Senna S. The blue flag's being shown, so he'll have to watch as he moves out onto the track. Then you ease your way through turn 16 before accelerating along the pit straight to end the lap. Just a dab on the brakes for the awesome final right-hand bend that leads you into a new lap. At the end of another short straight comes a very tight right-left chicane. Use the curbs. One of his tyres has punctured. I don't think he'll be able to get it safely back to the pits. He's having to retire from the Italian Grand Prix. I don't believe it. He'll be an angry man right now. He's got a mountain to climb to get back into the race. The Minardi that's in for a pit stop is the Minardi of Shinji Nakano. He's out. Another victim of this Hockenheim circuit. What rotten luck. Japan's Shinji Nakano looks like he's got to pit. He's right off the pace. A very short pit straight heads towards Turn 1, a flat-out left-hander in top gear. His Japanese Grand Prix is over. 
It's retirement from Suzuka. That's followed by a technical left-right, followed by a faster left combination. The white flag is to tell him to take care. There's a stationary car up ahead. Once safely through the OS curve, it's acceleration all the way to the last of the three chicanes. Then you fly down the short straight towards the very tight downhill S-bend. That gearbox won't let you finish. Just pull into the garage. It's over for today. Accelerating away, but not for long as you arrive at the left-hand hairpin, the Saxe curve. A thoroughly deserved win for Jarno Trulli in the Prost. Young Ralph Schumacher's either going to retire or come into the pits for a refit. Interesting is one word you could use for it. It will certainly throw a double six for this race. He'll be in on the back row of the grid in 21st if it stays the same. Now apply the power so you're accelerating hard all the way through the apex and to the exit. And it's back to normal racing conditions as the green flag is shown. Mind the barrier on the right to exit the square, then downhill towards Mirabeau. He could qualify 12th on the grid if things stay the way they are. Oh, what can you say to that? He's out of this year's Belgian Grand Prix. Next, you negotiate the medium uphill camps a bend, a fast right-hander. Just look at Nakano's car. I bet he'll be coming into the pit soon. An excellent drive, and it's rewarded with 14th place. This could signal the end of his race, unless, of course, it's a problem that can be fixed in the pits. I think it's fair to say that we can expect Jan Magnussen into the pits at the end of this lap. It has to be the engine. The Williams has definitely got some kind of engine problem. What a victory for Wurtz. A terrific win in his debut season. He certainly won't, Murray. Let's just hope he can forget that and get himself into a good rhythm. Magnussen has won. It's a first place for Jan Magnussen. Accelerating hard, controlling the wheel spin, heading downhill into a chicane, second gear. He'll soon be in the slipstream of Magnussen, and then I'd imagine he'll try to get past him immediately. Yes, there's certainly something not quite right at the moment, and a pit stop does look likely. Unfortunately, he's had to retire from this year's Spanish Grand Prix. If he can keep this pace going until the end of the lap, it'll put him into provisional pole. I'd agree with that, Murray. After all, he can always change to slicks if the track starts to dry. If this rain continues, it's inevitable it will affect the results. I just hope it eases a little. It'll be Michael Schumacher on the winner's podium as he takes the chequered flag. Then down to Aqua Minerali, a double right, the second tightens as you head uphill. The lights are off, the drivers are away, the Canadian Grand Prix is on. Then the long 180 degree right hand bend that takes you onto the back straight. Now it's on to the brakes for turn one, the most obvious overtaking point on the circuit, before sweeping past turn eight and down towards the slow chicane in front of the Clark stand. Unbelievable, and that's the end to his Australian Grand Prix. That collision has given you a stop-go penalty. Come in after this lap. He's lost a place to Verstappen. Which leads you towards Pouin, a double left-hander taken very fast. His nose cone's completely ruined. He's going to have to return to the pits. On the exit, it's a simple case of accelerating through the right curve to the finish line. Jean Alessi Saba crosses the line to take the chequered flag. He's got Olivier Panis in front of him now. He'll surely have a go at getting past. He's right off the boil. There's got to be something wrong with the car. Martin? This looks like a curve ahead, but it's easily full power for a Formula One car in top gear. Well, I doubt it's the engine. There'd be some smoke, but it may be the gearbox. Yes, I'm sure the Benetton team will do whatever they can to understand this failure. No matter how close he gets, he just can't seem to get past. That's the end of the road as far as his Belgian Grand Prix is concerned. There's nothing obviously wrong with Frenson's car, but he is losing a lot of ground. It's go, 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 down under for the Australian Grand Prix. As you can see, that's taken his nose cone off, and that's bound to lose him time. If it does start to rain, team tactics will become the real decider in today's race. Pedro Diniz is making life very difficult as he guards his position. Downhill head Heavy braking for the Nouvelle Chicane, a great passing opportunity. And that's the last we'll see of him in this year's Hungarian Grand Prix. Austrian Alexander Wurz shows that he's not that easy to get past. Easing off the throttle sees you around the fast Nord curve, which tightens on the exit. The charge from the grid leads you into the slowest part of the circuit, La Source hairpin. You've got some damage to your rear wing. We've got another one ready for you if you decide to come in. I don't think it's race-threatening for Ralph. 
but he's going to have to pit at the end of this lap. That is unlucky. It's fuel, I think. He's run out of fuel. Next is the high-speed S-curve, which is a series of two left-right combinations. That will be a difficult one to take. I really thought he could do something special here at the Nürburgring. These make up the Varianti Goodyear. Use plenty of acceleration on the exit. Takagi dealt with that very well. He was under a lot of pressure. It's a beautiful day here, and the track's in perfect condition for racing. A disappointing pit stop there. Let's hope it doesn't affect his race too much. What a way to end the race. His engine's blown up. The exit sees hard acceleration again as you speed towards the stadium section. Once you're through the Dunlop curve, be ready for a switch to the right for the two Degna curves. A good, solid ninth place. A magnificent effort. I should imagine so, Murray. He's avoided any major trouble and he's looking strong. All that remains for him is to finish this last lap of the race. Yes, Murray, you must let the leaders pass immediately when the blue flag is waved at you. Well, I certainly can't see the point to continue in that car when it's so badly damaged. The steward of Barrichello's pulled off the track and into the pits to make a stop. What a start! The Argentinian Grand Prix is go! It's a great circuit here in Canada, but he's discovered that it's also very tough. A lot of work goes into each of these races and this is not how you want them to end before breaking hard into the 90 degree left that exits into Club Corner. Then you sweep through the Curva du Sol, a left-hander that takes you onto the long back straight. A series of tight S-bends take you around towards the medium left, Curva del Ombu. Your engine isn't going to make it, I'm afraid. It's going to mean retiring, I think. Well, he's made it through a hectic start. He's just got to keep it up now. And yes, his rear wing's been smashed to pieces in that collision. You flick down through the gears and sweep smoothly through the left, ready for the right-hander. The British Grand Prix gets off to a flyer. What a fabulous blast-off. Well, Martin, he's bound to make a move to get past Takagi fairly soon. You have a short straight next that doglegs to the right slightly as you arrive at the hairpin. He's certainly showing a lot of persistence, and as you say, it's bound to pay off eventually. A short straight takes you into the medium left. Try to keep a tight line again here. Get ready to change down the gearbox as you approach the tight left-hand hairpin, Toza. Not long to go now, as the drivers are moving into the last quarter of the race. The second splits put him into a position to challenge for provisional pole. Which leads you to the slow Varianti Alta chicane, this time a right left. We're here in Jerez to see the outcome of today's Grand Prix. I think you're being a bit kind there, Martin. It looked like he just pushed a bit too hard. Would you believe it? He's out of the Argentinian Grand Prix. Then it's hard on the brakes for a right-hander towards the louder stand at turn six. The final right takes you back onto the finishing straight, which is anything but straight. His Hockenheim 1998 is over. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. There's a sweeping curve that takes you towards the 90-degree left-hand Verth curve. And and look, his Monaco Grand Prix is over. Finished. It's going to have to be a pit stop, Murray. I can't see how he can manage like this. Silverstone is such a great circuit, but he certainly won't agree with me just now. He finds out that Mika Hakkinen isn't prepared to give away his position that easily. He fails to make any positions and he stays 17. The second splits put him onto provisional pole if he could just keep this going. We have the Jordan of Ralf Schumacher in for his pit stop now. It's a tremendous win for Frenchman Jean Alesi. The pit crew are ready and I don't think this was a scheduled pit stop. From a downhill start, you charge to the first corner, decelerating all the way in. Next, it's the tight Abbey chicane, a sharp left followed by a right-hander. You start by climbing uphill towards the tight right-handed Castrol curve. The youngster holds him off well. Tuero's putting up a good fight. It was a good attempt, but Jano Trulli staved him off. Yes, Murray, it's engine trouble. Then it could well signal the end of his race. Another victim of the Monaco circuit. This place takes no prisoners. I may be wrong, but he looks certain to try and pass Jan Magnussen. Can you believe it? The Sauber's going nowhere now. He's out of the race. Ease off a bit until you can come in for your stop. The fuel's very low. 
At the end of the pit straight is the tricky left-right chicane, Decida du Sol. Alexander Wurtz is his next target. He's about to have a go at passing him, I think. Johnny Herbert will soon be close enough to attempt the passing manoeuvre. A dreadful start to the race. It's going to be an uphill struggle now. A smooth touch on the accelerator takes you around Brooklands towards Luffield. He looks like he's about to try and get past the arrows of Salo. The former world champion won't give up a position quite as easily as that, I'm afraid. Rossette is coming in, Ricardo Rossette in the Tyrrell, coming into the pits. He may well have a jammed gearbox, that'd certainly slow things up. That is a disaster, Murray. Sauber were hoping for better things this season. Full speed ahead as you sweep at full speed through the Curva del Seraglio. He's showing a good level of consistency with his lap times this session. As you flick your car up through the gears and past the pits to complete your lap. He's going to have to come in the pits now as he's used all of his 30 laps for today. What a fantastic lap! It's moved him even further up the grid. Magnificent! Up into provisional pole position in qualifying. I don't think so, says Damon Hill as he closes the door. He'll lose valuable seconds after that stop. It seemed to take forever. And remarkably, he's managed to lap everyone on the track. Then a right-hander takes you past the Natur Tribune West stands. The start-finish line is a few metres away from the exit of that corner. And we're now moving into the closing stages of the race. Oh no, it's one of the Jordans. He's out. What rotten luck. Prepare for hard braking into Le Coombe, a tight right-left chicane. That puts him provisionally into fifth on the grid. What's happening? That lap time wasn't so good. Come into the pits if there's a problem. He's being pushed further back down the grid. That's 17th now. A dab on the brakes and you keep a smooth line around the fast stow corner. You look like you're having problems steering. If it's the tyres, you'd better come in. And if retirement wasn't bad enough, now he has to walk back to the pits. Rest assured, that's definitely not how he expected to start the season. The Williams pit crew have tyre warmers off and one of the Williams is on its way in. We think it's your gearbox that's causing the problems. Just try to keep going. And he now looks like he'll have to settle for 18th on the grid. This is a fast sweeping left-hander blending straight into a second left. That's Fissy Keller ahead, but is he close enough to try for a pass? You immediately attack turn two, an accelerating 90 degree left. But once you get the exit right, the parabolica is tremendously rewarding. And it looks as though Frenchman Panis just won't be overtaken. It certainly was, Murray, and it was cool and calm, very impressive. Hard on the brakes as you slow dramatically for the left turn into the bus stop, and right again to the entrance of the famous tunnel, Virage du Portier. You'll be coming up with some back markers soon, don't take any risks. And I can see the red flag being waved. The race is being stopped. He's out, he's out of the Japanese Grand Prix, what terrible luck. Damon Hill's Jordan's just entered the pit lane to make a stop. He slipped up a little at the second split. It's a pity he was going so well. Perhaps he took on a lot of fuel, Murray. That could explain such a long stop. That's a Tyrrell coming into the pits to make a stop. It's Takagi. That leads you up to the Bico de Pato, the slowest part of the circuit. Immediately into Chateau d'Eau, the water tower, a tight right-hander. That's unbelievable. He's completely lost his rear wing. A short back straight, slightly uphill, leads towards Adelaide Hairpin. That's the drivers at quarter distance of the race now. I'm not quite sure which of the Williams it is, but he is out of the race. Reaching over 200 miles per hour along this stretch, VMAX here. They're going to have to watch it at turn one now. Easy does it. They're off. The Belgian Grand Prix gets off to a furious start. He's out. His Spanish Grand Prix is over for another year. That's Fissy Keller's Benetton. He's slowing down, definitely. He's back out, and that was a very quick stop. Tremendous teamwork. That takes you onto a medium straight, which has a slight dogleg to the right. This left right, the Villeneuve chicane, which can be taken at reasonable speed. He's got to make up time now through the rest of the circuit, and that won't be easy. Uh, you better get yourself back to the garage, you've been disqualified. Fissy Keller in the Benetton did well to keep his place that time. That's Jarno Trulli ahead of him, but is he close enough to get past? Now, was that Rossette's Tyrrell or Takagi's that just passed him? You'll have to watch yourself out there, another bump, it'll take your front wing off. One of his wheels has been ripped off. Surely that's his race over. 
He's really under pressure with that car right up his gearbox. The next short straight prepares you for the 180 degree Repsol. And that's a great piece of overtaking by Mika Salo. Before breaking hard into the 90 degree right hand turn 13. He's coming up to Eddie Irvine's Ferrari. He'll surely try to get past him. Just outside the points, but a good seventh place. Accelerate all the way through the exit and over the line to complete your lap. Before going back down the gearbox for Pont de la Concorde called chicane yes he is retiring that's not what stuart were hoping for today you then sweep uphill gaining speed all the way through the next fast chicane that's easier said than done although there's still a long way to go in this race it's a painfully slow hairpin the inside rear wheel spins on the exit you bury the throttle and prepare for the nicky louder curve that's all the way up to ninth place he's lap now that's quite a bit of wheel damage you've got there come into the pits and we'll try and fix it it's hard on the accelerator, easing off slightly on the approach to Cops. And Olivier Panis manages to squeeze past him. Johnny Herbert doesn't give up positions easily, and he proves it. Carrying speed towards the left-hander called 180 degrees. We're off! The Luxembourg Grand Prix is underway! Your engine temperature's a little high. Don't push the car too much out there. Michael has a handy knack of making his car very wide when it suits him. A great start at Monza for the Italian Grand Prix. Esteban Tuero is on his way into the pits to make a stop. Your lap begins by heading downhill into the unsighted turn one. He's about to come in for another of his scheduled pit stops. That's a disappointment. Not the kind of start you want in any race, is it? Before easing off into the very fast left-right by the weight stand. You get an amazing amount of grip through the exit as you drive for the line. It was a good attempt, but Magnussen was having none of it. Oh no, he's overdone it. Off the track and into the gravel. That split time isn't as good as his best first split. And then there's the final curve, a 180 degree bend to the right. He won't move up the grid after that lap. He stays 20th. And that ends his Brazilian Grand Prix for another year. I don't know if that spin was down to the car or just bad driving. I think we can give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm feeling generous today. <laughs> the final one is the opal curve, which leads you towards the end of the lap. Let's just hope he doesn't get held up too much by the traffic ahead. That collision may have been due to a mechanical failure. It's all systems go at Estoril, Portugal. No sooner are you through the first left right than you're pitched into another. Hakkinen has won. It's a win for Mika Hakkinen. The exit takes you up through the gearbox, sweeping right at high speed. They're off! The Brazilian Grand Prix is underway! Possibly, but I'm not convinced, Murray. I think it was just bad judgment. It is bad luck, Murray. That'll be a huge disappointment to Ferrari. You move off the track slightly on the exit, using the grass if necessary. Heavy braking for the next slightly downhill right-left chicane. Accelerate up to the 90-degree right-hander, Banco de Sabadell. He'll lose valuable seconds as he tries to battle past the back markers. This is amazing! They're flying down to turn one! A slight curve takes you downhill at speed towards the Remus curve. The Ferrari of Michael Schumacher is on its way into the pits. We're coming up towards the closing laps of today's race. This is the top speed section. Difficult to be accurate in the poor light. Mika Hakkinen fends him off quite magnificently. The second curve is much tighter but still quite fast because of camber before slowing down for the left-hander scene of many crashes. You're sliding about there. Come in for new tyres as soon as you can. He hasn't done enough to make up any positions on the grid, I'm afraid. If you're struggling with slicks, come in for wet tyres, we're ready. Jean Alessi will definitely be coming in, wouldn't you say? Oh no, awful luck for Ferrari, he's out! Fissi Keller is determined to hold off the challenge. Mika Salo is now in very serious danger of being overtaken. Then you sweep through a fast right towards the Curva de la Confiteria. The exit consists of a fast left right onto a short straight. A modern fast circuit and a great test for any driver. Which is another tight left right chicane. Use the curbs. That's up to seventh on the grid if the positions stay the same. Yes, it was a cracking start to the race and he can be pleased with that getaway. Just come in when you think it's too wet. The tyres are waiting for you. The warm-up lap is over. The red lights are on. He'll have to do a bit better than that to get past Olivier Panis. His grid placing is now back at 21st. His grid position is now back to 19th.
but Nakano blocked that attempt with ease. He loses a place there as Deniz goes past him. What a terrific start. He'll be more than happy about that. Until you enter Stavolo, a tricky ride that turns you towards home. If the damage to your front wing's worrying you, come in, we'll replace it. Accelerate into a very fast ride. No room for error here. Now, there's no point trying to continue. The engine's not going to last, I'm afraid. The nearest car in front of you has just come in for a pit stop. Do you want to make the second scheduled stop now? Come in when you're ready. Surely he's about to have a go at passing Ralph Schumacher. He goes past to lap the last place driver. An off-camber right-hander leads into the never-ending Dunlop curve, sweeping left and then followed by a 180-degree right. The entry is always tricky as you have to judge your braking exactly. It was a very brave move, but it was always going to end in tears. He's trying to get into the slipstream of a Lacey in the hope of overtaking him. That's immediately followed by a left, still very much downhill. First gear for the hairpin, one of the slowest corners on the circuit. Ease your way through and accelerate uphill, moving through the gears. It's never a pretty sight to see someone retiring from a race. That's the Jordan of Ralph Schumacher that's about to lap it. That won't move him up from his current seventh place. The first is a fast chicane through the Brabham and Jones stands. You may be right, Murray. The car certainly seemed to react strangely. One of the Tyrrells has stopped. It's out of the race, all over. He seemed to lose concentration there and he's off the track. It looks like the first of their scheduled stops is coming up. He definitely looks close enough to Frenton to have a go at overtaking. This is a great corner. You really attack it before the sweep downhill. Continuing downhill is a high-speed right-hander, turn three. Your front wheel's damaged. Come back to the pits if you can. It looks like one of the Stewart cars, and he's retiring. The driver about to lap him is Esteban Tuero. It's a possibility, Murray. He's certainly well off the pace at the moment. Sweeping right, accelerating hard towards Imola Chicane. Control the power at the exit and pass the pit lane entrance. He's managed to get past the McLaren of David Coulthard. Oh no, he's out of the Portuguese Grand Prix. They accelerate down to turn three, a 90 degree right-hander. I'm sure if he keeps the pressure on, it'll pay off in the end. He lost it a little around that corner. That'll cost him valuable time. Yes, Murray, that will be a huge disappointment for the whole team before breaking hard for the 90 degree Lacaxa left-hander. It's one of your rear wheels that's damaged. You better come in. You might want to come in for slicks. The track's drying up a bit. There's a yellow flag further up the track. Watch yourself. First or second gear and hold a tight line through the apex. Then a terrifying right-hander between the walls in fifth gear. 2.8 miles, 67 laps to finish the race distance. He seemed to get a lot of grip around that corner and held the line nicely. And into the start, finish straight over the line to complete your lap. It's looking good for a grid place of 17. Welcome to Manicourt for the French Grand Prix. A lapse of concentration and he certainly paid the penalty for it. He's just going to have to hope for a mistake to let him through. That was Fisichella. Giancarlo Fisichella's passed him. His last laps moved him up into fourth place. Calm down a bit or you'll end up getting black flagged. His front tyre's punctured. Can he make it back to the pits? Your closest challenger's just come in for a pit stop. He just can't find a way past Irvine's Ferrari. The prost of Jarno Trulli is about to lap him. The driver he's about to lap is Ralph Schumacher. That only keeps him in his current 16th place. That's the driver in 21st place he's lapped now. Takagi moves past him and moves up a position. They've given you a time penalty for dangerous driving. The left side of his front wing's been badly damaged. Damaged. We've got a new set of tyres waiting for you. Come in when you're ready. As they approach the end of an enthralling first lap. The back of his car was sliding, suggesting a touch of oversteer. And it looks like he's about to attempt to overtake Hill. Off! But that may well have been a steering failure. Now you've lost your rear wing. You have to be careful with your steering. It looked like he tried to get through a gap that just wasn't there. He looks certain to have a go at getting past Barrichello. That's even quicker than his previous pole position time. But it's a very tight final chicane just after the pit entry. That's Fissy Keller in the Benetton coming into the pits. We've now come to the end of the practice session for this afternoon. Yes, Martin, the conditions have been perfect for the whole weekend. This time it's the medium left-right Varianti Escari. The gentle right then left can easily be taken at full speed. A short burst to take Malmody, a demanding right
right-hander. He's having a look to see if there's a way past the world champion. That keeps him in 15th place on the grid. He'd better move out of the way soon or he'll be black flagged. That's 20th place on the grid if nothing changes. Yet another straight brings you to the second of the hairpins. That'll put him 11th on the grid if things stay the same. That is unfortunate. It's back to the drawing board for Tyrrell, I'm afraid. Again on the power as you hit the apex for a fast exit. Any second now, he'll be lapped by Hakkinen. And now he's lapped everyone below 12th place. To be fair, he looked like he tried to avoid it, but it was too late. The lights are off. It's race time in Hungary. Rubens Barrichello holds on to his position comfortably in the end before breaking hard into the slippery right-hander, the curve on. They do look a bit threatening up there. Let's just hope we don't get rain. It's a possibility. They may have been getting worn and losing grip. Whenever you feel the need to get the front wing fixed, just come in. Definitely not. He's given himself a lot of work to do now. That's got to go down as careless driving, Martin. His lap times are slipping slightly during this session. That's Damon Hill in front of him, but will he be able to get past? He's about to be lapped by Rubens Barrichello. He'll be 19th on the grid if things stay the way they are. I think he'll be coming up towards another scheduled stop. The start at Monza has a very long run to the first chicane. Jean Alesi goes past him and up a place. That means he's lapped everyone up to 18th. Another short straight to Tabak, a fourth gear left-hander. Yes, Maria laps in concentration and he ended up in the scenery. You take a fairly wide line into Luffield, powering on early. That prepares you for the medium right-left Fania chicane. Oh, Martin, he certainly won't be happy with that start. And he's now lapped up to 17th position. After the exit, a short straight towards the first Lesmo. That was a terrific first split. He's right on the pace. He's looking at 15th place on the grid after that lap. That's everyone up to 14th place. He's lapped now. He's now lapped everyone except second place. We're ready for the second planned stop, if you are. We've now seen the crucial opening laps completed. Michael Schumacher closes the door on him this time. It's Ricardo Rosset who's about to lap him now. It's Johnny Herbert in the Sauber. He gets past him well. He can't better his ninth place on the grid. It's Hill in the Jordan taking the chequered flag. Olivier Panis is the driver he's about to lap. Then there's a short straight towards a very grippy left-hander. Yes, his Italian Grand Prix is over for another season. You get plenty of grip in this turn, especially at the exit. He's got a bit of catching up to do if he's going to threaten the lead. The cars behind you are lapping you. Try not to hold them up. Yes, Murray, the Barcelona circuit has beaten him this time. It's a good second split. He could pull out a great lap time here. That takes him out. Out of the Brazilian Grand Prix. There seems to be no way past Rosset. He loses a place as Barrichello moves past him. The start straight immediately sweeps you away to the right. And he's out of the Australian Grand Prix. That doesn't look too good. He's ended up right off the track. Before launching the car through the fast downhill right-hander. What is happening out there? Get a hold of yourself. He seems to have slowed right down, Martin. He's in trouble. You then open up on the exit towards the final Coca-Cola curve. On exit, it's hard acceleration as the corner opens up. That could move him up to 18th on the grid. I'm afraid that won't improve his grid position. He's having a look. I think he's going to try and pass Coulthard. He comes up to complete his last lap but one. Now you stay tight, surprisingly tight, for the Ford curve. It's maximum acceleration down the pit straight. Yes, it doesn't look like he's ever going to get past. That's a blow for Benetton. He's out. And that's taken his front wing right off. And he's at the back of the grid if he can't improve on that. You've taken your nose cone off. You're going to have to come in for a new one. He doesn't improve on his 13th position. It'd be a shame if the weather decided who wins. Another left swings you through Chapel, an easy curve. Yes, he gets past the Tyrrell of Tora Takagi. Now Mikasalo is in for his pit stop. Hard acceleration before breaking into the second Lesmo. But now it's all about getting through turn one safely. Is he close enough to Deniz to try to pass? That's it, right off the track and onto the grass. The Japanese Grand Prix is go. Coulthard's just entered the pit lane to make a stop. Come in as soon as you can for another nose cone. 
then a gentle right takes you through the old starting grid. He moves himself up into sixth place with that lap. That's Mikasalo ahead and he's about to be lapped. Then set off downhill towards the slow gosset curve. He stays in sixth position on the grid after that lap. Now it's hard acceleration all the way down the hangar straight. The new grid at Silverstone moves nearer to the first corner. Then it's flat out through the long sweeping left-hand curve. He's now about to be lapped by Panis. He's about to be lapped by Michael Schumacher. That puts him well down on the current leader. That pushes him back into ninth on the grid. It's the gearbox. We've got a gearbox problem. Keep an eye on your fuel. You might want to come in soon. That took quite a bit of time. I wonder if they had a problem. He's having a look to see if there's a way past Ricardo Rosset. Now he slips down to 11th on the grid. Whatever it is, he'll take no further part in this race. Oh no, he's stopping. Looks like he's out of fuel. It looks like he's about to go for Michael Schumacher. It's the start of the San Marino Grand Prix. He's now lapped all the way to 11th. We are now heading towards the Variante della Roggia. And that's the young Canadian that's just gone past him. David Coulthard moves past him easily there. He gets away beautifully, a perfect pit stop. He's got a fairly fast approach towards a slow left-hander. Alexander Wurz in the pit lane, making a stop. The exit takes you into the high-speed power horse curve. He's gone up into third position after that lap. Take it easy until we see if you've picked up any damage. What a magnificent opening lap to the race. Alexander Wurz moves past him beautifully there. That pushes him right to the back of the grid. I think the driver error played a big part in that accident. Yes, it was definitely Rubens Barrichello he connected with. He's away cleanly. What a great pit stop. No doubt about that, Murray. His car is quite badly damaged. Don't worry too much about the cars behind. They're lapping you. And that ends this morning's practice session. Uh, you lost a bit of time on that lap. There's nothing wrong, I hope. It isn't easy to get past Barry Callow, though. He's overtaken Michael Schumacher's Ferrari. Careful not to be going too fast into this next bend. This is Fissy Keller that he's about to lap. He somehow managed to get himself back on the track. That could put him up to 16th on the grid. That moves him up to provisional pole position. He can't better his 18th grid position. It looked like Takagi. Yes, Murray, it was Takagi. Are you breaking too hard? Try to break earlier. You've been shown the black flag! He fails to better his 11th position. He sits in 13th place on the grid now. That was Barrichello in the Stewart he overtook. He's improved to 10th place after that lap. They're off here in Dundee. What a start. He's about to be lapped by Tora Takagi. That's Mika Hakkinen coming in to make a pit stop. Now it's the Vidal chicane, a good overtaking place. He drops down into 8th place on the grid. That's enough to keep him in 2nd place for now. He's now lapped the driver who's 20th. That's enough to move him up to second on the grid. Lots and lots of grip. Use the curb on the exit. Not too fast on the approach to this right-hand bend. He's lapped up to 19th place. Olivier Panis is in the pits for his stop. You better watch yourself. Calm down. It's fuel, Murray. Yes, he's out of fuel. He'll be looking to get past Frenson before too long. Well, we couldn't have asked for better weather for today's race. He's definitely suffered a major loss in power, Murray. That was a good piece of driving by Mika Salo. He's been pushed back to 14th position. He looks like he's preparing for a move against Fisichella. That's 16th place he's lapped to now. I'd have to say it was more skill than luck that time, Murray. That looked a bit nasty. Be careful out there. That's Hakkinen's McLaren he just passed. And he's about to reach some more back markers. Then you fly past the old Nissan curve at full speed. Then it's out into the tree-lined section of the circuit. That's a very tight corner, but he took it really well. Then it's another long straight and up to top gear. That pushes him back to 20th on the grid. And that will surely move him down the race order as well. And that was a hectic first few laps. He's out of the Canadian Grand Prix. Be careful up ahead, there's a car in trouble. As you turn right, accelerate hard through the exit. That's the arrows of Denise just passed. That's a disappointing second split time. Now he's about to be lapped by Irvine. Now to the Raskas, the slowest part of the circuit. Nothing in particular, Murray, but it was slower than usual. Once around this hairpin, it's hard on the accelerator. And Esteban Tuero overtakes him. Great stuff! What a race! 
That's Mikasalo who's about to lap it. He's about to be lapped by Johnny Herbert. That's the Jordan of Schumacher he's just passed. He's now eighth best after that flying lap. They're all in position. The lights are on. I can't see him being very happy about that lap time. Get out of the way! Can't you see the blue flag? That's Michael Schumacher he's about to lap. He'll be trying to pass Truly very soon, I expect. He's into first place after the first split. It's lost him valuable time, but at least he's still motoring. A very short straight past the pit entrance. It's down the gearbox for this next slow bend. That's Jean Alesi in for a pit stop. He's up on his best time at the second split. That's Alexander Wurz who's about to lap him. He's gone right into Esteban Tuero. And he's out of the race. He's spun out of the race. His grid position is now down to 10. Ralph Schumacher did well to keep his place there. He's going to be lapped by Pedro Deniz. You can take tremendous speed through the apex. And that's a very decent 15th position. A slippery circuit. It's also hard on brakes. It's hard on the brakes for this very tight right-hander. Another fast straight that sweeps you over to the right. Accelerate right through the exit of the chicane. And we can see that Trulli's in for a pit stop. The high-speed curve of Grandi turns you to the right. That wasn't too clever. He was all over the place at that corner. That's the race leader in, making a pit stop. Tuero did well to close the door there. Another short straight here towards the RTL curve. Yeah, watch yourself when you get to the back markers. And he's about to lap Shinji Nakano. And we have Herbert in for a pit stop now. Eddie Jordan will not be happy with this retirement. Yes, it's Irvine coming in for a pit stop. Now it's just a question of trying to pass Takagi. I think you should come in for a new set of tyres. David Coulthard is about to lap him. The Muppicom curve takes you down a gear or two. He's at the very back of the grid. Yet again into top gear over the finish line. He's just gone past the Williams, number one. He's doing a great job at keeping his position. And that's his best lap so far this session. Now he's lapped up to third position. Oh my word, he's lost his front wing. I can't believe it, he's hit Damon Hill. Well, he's behind the leader at the first split. I think it was Barry Kello he hit there. We can fix that rear wing if you want to come in. His position has dropped to seventh. Now he's about to lap Damon Hill. He's managed to battle past Hill's Jordan. And that corner could cost him dearly, I'm afraid. Jean Alesi is about to lap him. Hard on the brakes, the curbs are ruthless through here. Jan Magnussen is in for a pit stop, but he's safely back onto the circuit. This is a fast approach to a tricky right. As with all first bends, there can often be trouble. He's about to be lapped by the world champion. He's now back down to 16th. I don't know what he did there, but he's on the grass. And there's a spin. I don't believe it. Keeping it tight, there's more grip on the inside. After that lap, he remains 14th. But there's no way past the world champion. That keeps him 19th on the grid. Dinitz blocks that attempt very confidently. He'll stay 8th after that lap. And Takagi moved well to keep his place. The slicks are ready, if you think it's dry enough. Careful with the throttle exiting the slow right. That's 5th place he's moved down to now. He's now lapped up to 10th place. It's a Williams! He's out of the race! That'll only keep him 10th on the grid. From Stowe you sweep downhill into the Vale. He's coming up to lap Pedro Deniz. Now can he get past David Coulthard? It's now a fast sweep through the left-hand bend. That moves him out of pole position. He's about to be lapped by Fissy Keller. He's now lapped up to fifth place. He'll be lapped by Nakano soon. That takes you into a sweeping straight. This bend is taken easily at full speed. It looks like he's ready to take words. Take first or second gear through the hairpin. That's left him in a bad way, Martin. Now he's about to lap Magnussen. It's not any better than his fifth position. He's collided with Tora Takagi. Surely that crash could have been avoided. This traffic will definitely be holding him up. Up through the gearbox towards the Ascari curve. He's coming up towards some back markers. He stays in fourth place. That's Tuero he's about to lap. He's been lucky though and he's back on the track. He flies past Irvine. Jan Magnussen is about to lap him. A short straight towards the next chicane. He won't improve on his third position. Yeah! Yes, Michael Schumacher's overtaken him. The second exit can be tight, but there's lots of grip. He'll lose ground, but at least he's still going. He looks like he's having a problem with his steering. And down to the end of the long lap. 
he's been overtaken by Nakano. That was a magnificent recovery. He's lapped everyone up to eighth place. He's out. He's out at the A1 ring. It's a collision with Mikasalo. He's 21st on the grid. He's done it. He's safely passed Rosset. The light sequence is underway. Ricardo Rosset's overtaken him. Yes, Murray, the suspension and wheel are broken. He's lost his front wing in that collision, and he's about to be lapped by Frenson. Damon Hill moves past him beautifully. Surely now he'll try to pass Nakano. He's pushed down to fourth place. They're bound to be pleased after that stop. We're at the halfway stage of the race. Is he about to try and get past Hakkinen? Now he's down to second place. He's collided with Ralph Schumacher. He's been overtaken by Eddie Irvine. Is he going to come into the pits after this lap? That's Coulthard he's about to lap. He's 16th on the grid. Sweep around Woodcut to a new lap. He's managed to fight past Alesi. He's lapped up to sixth position. He flies past Rosset. He's now lapped all the way to 13th. He's collided with Herbert Sauber. He's collided with the world champion. He's 17th on the grid. Ninth place that lap moves him up to. He's about to be lapped by Hill. Who'll make it to turn one first? Build up speed towards the first corner. He comes up to lap Jean Alesi. That was a good lap time. Keep it up. He's 15th on the grid. He's gone into the back of Reset. And he's into the final lap. He's about to lap Barrichello. That moves him up to 13th. He's lost a place to Ralph Schumacher. He's been passed by Jarno Trulli. He comes up to lap the Canadian. He moves up to lap Mika Hakkinen. A good attempt, but he's still 12th. He fights his way past Fredson. He definitely hit Coulthard. That's a much better first split time. We've now completed 10 laps. He's up to 14th with that lap. He's lapped up to fourth place now. He's been overtaken by Hakkinen. Could that have been his tyres, Martin? He doesn't want to take this bend too fast. He's hit Fissy Keller's Benetton. He's just hit Olivier Panis. Ralph Schumacher leads. John Alacy held him off well that time. That's Nakano he's hit. 12th position he moves down to. He certainly will not, Martin. He's 11th on the grid. He's about to lap Eddie Irvine. And we're just waiting for the lights. Michael Schumacher leads. He's lapped up to 15th. Go, but watch your speed. Then catapult towards Lerves. He's 13th on the grid. He fights his way past Penis. Barry Kello leads. He's collided with Wurtz. Now that was a lucky recovery. He's 19th on the grid. I think he hit Jean Alacy. He's 14th on the grid. To recover there took a lot of skill. Your lap time was better that time. That's Herbert he's about to lap. Go easy on your brakes. He's overtaken Jarno Trulli. He's lapped up to 7th place. He's passed Esteban Tuero. And he passes Mika Salo. Takagi leads. He took that corner perfectly, Murray. And accelerate into a new lap. He fights past Verstappen. Tuero leads. Yes, Murray, it was Jarno Trulli. He seems to be struggling more than a little. He's down to 6th on the grid. He moves up to lap Takagi. He's 20th on the grid. Just a dab on the brakes for this curve. The next is a medium left-hander. Now you're charging downhill. The world champion leads. That moves him down to 15. You've done it! Magnussen leads. He's coming up to lap Frenson. It's put him out of the race, Murray. Salo leads. It looks like he's hit Irvine. He's 18th on the grid. He's 5th on the grid. He's overtaken Wurtz. He's coming up to lap Wurtz. It goes on forever, this last corner. And he's lost a place to Frenson. He moves ahead of Nakano. Yes, he did well to keep it all together. That moves him down to third. Nakano leads. He's 12th on the grid. Another burst of acceleration. Attack this hard for a good lap. He's about to lap truly. He's 10th on the grid. He's 9th on the grid. He's sixth on the grid. He won't be very pleased with that lap, Murray. But can he keep this up, though, Murray? It was Ricardo Rosset, Murray. Rosset leads. Exit right over the curb. Herbert leads. He's hit Michael Schumacher. The next is a fast right. Coulthard leads. What a time to spin. Penis leads. Truly leads. Use the curb there at the exit. Denise leads. Remember the speed limit. 
Fisichella leads. He's second on the grid. Wurtz leads. He's gone past Fisichella. It looks like he hit Trulli. I think he's hit Frensen. Alessi leads. He's third on the grid. He's eighth on the grid. He's fourth on the grid. Irvine leads. Hill leads. Frensen leads. That's Michael Schumacher. That's Michael Schumacher. It's the world champion. He's hit Deniz. Then it's another chicane. It's Ralph Schumacher. It's Eddie Irvine. It's Ralph Schumacher. He's in pole position. It's Eddie Irvine. That's Denitz. That's Wurtz. That's Barrichello. It's Fisichella. That's Rossette. It's Nakano. That's Wurtz. That's Barrichello. That's Nakano. He's seventh on the grid. That's Nakano. It's Fisichella. There's another short straight here. He's hit Mika Hakkinen. He gets past Herbert. Hakkinen leads. You have to slow on the way in. It's Olivier Panis. It's Olivier Panis. That's Takagi. That's Truly. That's Alacy. It's Salo. That's Tuero. That's Tuero. That's Coulthard. It's Tuero. It's Verstappen. It's Herbert. It's Frentzen. That's Denitz. It's Tuero. It's Hakkinen. That's Hill. It's Salo. It's Herbert. That's Hill. It's Hakkinen. It's Hakkinen. It's Hakkinen. It's Hakkinen. That's Alacy. It's Hakkinen. It's Hakkinen. That's Coulthard. That's Rossette. It's Nakano. That's Verstappen. That's Truly. It's Frentzen. That's Takagi. 